how we went about the werewolf transformation, dog soldiers, was to avoid doing a werewolf transformation. Because there, there was kind of two choices. One was you try, and, you try and match something like American Werewolf in London, which is impossible. You just did not have the time or the resources to do that. So I knew, And I knew that. And I didn't want to go down the CG uh, route at that point. Because at that stage, CG effects were, were not all great. You know, some of them were fine. I mean, it's obviously it's post Jurassic Park, but um, I didn't want I didn't want to do like some cheesy morph thing. So I wanted to go back to a more old school technique of like having them hide behind the furniture and pop up as the werewolf. I just thought it it, it fitted the tone of the movie as well because it's not it's not a I don't think it's a straight faced film. I think it's very very tongue in cheek. And one one of my, one of my favorite scary movies as a kid is not a scary movie at all. It's called Carry On Screaming. And um, it's, it's, it's meant as a comedy, but it's shot using a lot of the sets and very much in the same style as the old Hammer films. So it's really rich with atmosphere. And the sets and the production values are beautiful, but it's all played for laughs. Uh, but in that film, they have a guy who turns into, is like a Jekyll and Hyde character. And he hides behind the furniture and like pops up and he's a monster. And I was like, that's what we should do. <laughs> uh, so that's the kind of route that we went down for the transformation. Yeah. But it's mostly sound effects that you kind of I think people remember more that there's a transformation, but when you watch it, it's kind of it's not there at all.